Tutulos. Uh, I will be moderating this panel today. I'm the mom of two kids. Uh, one of my kids are going to school next year. So everything that we're going to discuss is very important for me as well. Welcome to everybody at this uh, theater uh, center, Yugra Classic. We're in the 12th uh, IT forum with participation of SCI countries and BRICS countries at Crunch Yugra conference is happening. We're starting our plenary meeting, which is called Transformation of the Educational System, Vision, Views and Reality. And before we're going to begin, I would like to introduce our speakers today. Governor of Hantemansisk Autonomous uh, di District, Natalia Komarova. Director of the Department of Digital Transformation and Big Data, Pavel Kuzmin, from the Ministry of Education of Russia. Director of Ed Crunch Center University, Nurlan Kiyasov. Director of Competency Center and Business Solutions in the Practica, Alexander Gubarik. And as a confirmation to the fact that digitalization entered our life, we're going to have three more online speakers. Deputy of State Duma Coordinator of ONF Equal Opportunities for Kids, moderator of Russian Front of Education, Lyubov Duhanina. And international experience is going to be shared with us by the chairman of Chinese section of the BRICS section, Liu Jinin. And C General Secretary of Singapore teaches Mike Tierman. It's not a secret from anyone that digital industry the world of education and generation of TikTokers will be able to learn anything anywhere thanks to digital technologies. But the educational industry by its structure is not very simple. In order for it to develop dynamically everywhere and change in the digital context, we need to introduce some innovations into this industry, both technological, methodological, and legal. And due to the fact that pandemics has speeded up our acquaintance with digital education, industry still slowing down in some places because parents are complaining they don't understand whatever should be done children for children is very complicated sometimes and experts they have different opinions on our future in digital education so we have a lot of things to talk about and the first question i would like to ask to natalia vladimirovna Hanty Mansisk and Yugra region is one of the most advanced regions in Russia from the point of view of digital education. You have forums like that every year. You have valuable experience. You take very high rating in the area of digital education in Russia. So can you share your secrets with us? How your region approaches digital education? Which results have you achieved? What is the future and what should we pay attention to? Let's take a seat and we're going to continue. Thank you very much for inviting me, for entrusting me to tell you about our experience. And right now I would like to tell you that uh, it's very difficult for us to hide secrets. So we're not hiding any secrets and we're open for all of you. And we would like to tell you everything about education and other uh, services uh, provided to people and to population. It's extremely important. And if you will ask me or my team members, I will always tell you, look at what happens in the world, because we don't want to invent a wheel from the scratch. On the other side, we don't want to make errors that others have made and overcame. And on the third side, it's nice to make gifts. It's better than to receive them. <coughs> So, yes, we do have educational digital platform that was introduced since the year 2019. Alexander represents organization that we cooperated with in creating this interesting and uh, very highly acceptable program. It was accepted by a lot of experts as an efficient and modern. At least 
back in the year 2020 when it was awarded. We have united efforts of all our existing automated systems uh, that are to be used in educational processes in a single digital profile. Also, we'd like to tell you we have acquired a number of technological effects when we have switched to remote education in UGRA. We have decommissioned seven different uh, informational systems that were just duplicating each other and put them in, into a single platform. The platform is also integrated with the healthcare system. It is a very good integration. It provides a lot of functionality and openness for different situations that we are facing and that people are facing in their daily lives. Also, it is uh, connected to the state services with complex security platform safe kids platform uh, kaspersky lab we also work with them and with a number of suppliers of educational content yandex class uh, uh, electronic education open school learn.ru yandex algorithmics education russian electronic schools and by uniting all these platforms it helped us to in a very short period of time to overcome very high demand for this electronic resource and we didn't hear any complaints from people that they cannot receive educational services because they've been provided on a very high level and we were able to solve all the questions that were asked by a number of people who in the beginning didn't have the access to this platform on the basis of this educational platform we also have created special situational control center which includes 102 kpis in organization of educational process and this data is used by our specialists to correct educational curriculum uh, to amend some educational remote technologies because different kids they get adjusted differently to the electronic services to these new requirements that were provided to them and new conditions that were provided to them and this system gave us possibility to individualize our approach to every child if we didn't have enough teachers who were able to switch their curriculum into the electronic format we have connected teachers from other schools and regions and by this we have created opportunities for kids irrespectively to how far away a child is from a teacher physically and how far the educational facility is far away from the children by this equalizing the opportunities and looking at the results that we have acquired we can say that all our solutions were helped us to keep the high level of education keeping the highest reach in the course of pandemics uh, and in the post pandemic uh, period as well sorry for running ahead of the curve but nevertheless since the since the end of the year 2020 and uh, this period was a little bit weaker from the point of view of pandemic tension that's why i allowed myself to use the term post-pandemic but during the pandemic related classes that we've had teachers please don't judge me uh, for another new word that I have introduced but nevertheless during this period we were able to create individualized trajectories of liquidation of educational gaps for our children in any areas of education therefore our basic idea that we have been building on this educational technology was creating opportunities of building the model of personal growth for a pupil for a student on the basis 
of main education programs that are introduced. Communicational model of this educational process was built in such a way that the center of activity was used to create educational platform around every student. And the technology is just a conductor through which we conduct all these services. But the center around which the system is built is every student. And for the future, this is very important because digital technologies and education, <coughs> this is something that good to follow traditions, but these traditions should move forward and develop. We've had several objectives ahead of ourselves to use this digital platform. First one was to provide opportunities to students to use VR technologies, digital twin technologies, and several other digital uh, classes. The second one, to improve educational processes in separate, separate topics or topic areas by implementation of modern digital technologies, the account of filling databases with uh, different technological samples, exams, Olympic Games, contests and competitions which have to be conducted electronically. And our educational department and our Ministry of Education had an idea of replacing uh, a teacher during the curriculum formation. And this is very good that we have representatives of the ministry. So we have this idea and I think nothing stops us. And correct me if I'm wrong. So these uh, control programs uh, that are developed by teachers for their classes, for their courses, we would like to bring up to the regional level and regional educational departments will develop those programs on a centralized basis. And then we're going to receive more truthful uh, reflection of the condition in every class and with every teacher, if it's going to be conducted on a centralized basis. And then we'll be able to correct the program uh, education curriculum in every school, in every class on the basis of this uh, centralized data. Because right now teachers spend a lot of time to create this, uh, their own class curriculums, to invent uh, the, uh, a lot of paperwork which they had to previously fill up. So we had this idea to centralize this job to give more freedom to teachers to do their job. So I have permitted our teachers to do that. If not, then you correct me uh, if I'm wrong, please, uh, representatives of the ministry. And if it is possible, please support me. The next uh, objective, number three, is to provide integration of results, educational results, in the programs of uh, uh, additional education and main education during the creation of the portfolio of the student. And this uh, final. Uh, of an additional vocational education is divided and by this we are creating a portrait of possibilities and we formulate the opportunities for every child for their future harmonic development. Objective number four, to provide uh, school municipal uh, stages of a school Olympics on a single digital platform. Our main objective here is to receive real objective assessments of what we were able to achieve with our educational programs, because this will be a lot of external expert related programs and assessment specialists. And number five, integrate virtual uh, labs on different topics, physics, chemistry, biology, including genetics. Number six, provide automatization, automatization of a school catering process, introducing four level control system, public control for the food quality, budget uh, control, quality control for food products and uh, uh, control of technological processes and a balance of the catering provide, which provides food for our kids in schools. 
I'm really thankful that you have been asking this question to me previously and I would like to say thanks to our foreign guests as well and our foreign partners who are always sharing their experience with us and we use this experience and knowledge uh, uh, because they are independent experts and we do, do cooperate with a lot of uh, foreign uh, uh, specialists and we have this opportunity and we use it as much as possible we are still striving for future development so this is our main test so thank you very much for the floor provided to me that's all i wanted to say thank you thank you natalia vladimirovna i think this year this education year was a test for the whole globe especially in the area of education and especially for our ministry of education of russian federation which in the beginning of the 20th century was established and uh, immediately have entered the pandemics and the rocket and uh, we had to rebuild the new system we had to do a big colossal work methodological recommendations to the teachers launching digital platform national project uh, of digital education you had a lot of different projects and initiatives therefore pavel vladimirovich from the ministry i would like to talk to you right now about the work of your department which beautifully called department of digital transformation and big data and it sounds like this is the exact department this is the exact idea and the exact context where we might have new educational environment uh, for providing it to our children for bringing up a harmonic uh, education to our kids so please tell us how the big data and ai transform educational system and what should we expect especially on the side of school kids and their parents <clears throat> Thank you. You have started from the most complicated question about artificial intelligence. Well, in pedagogics, usually you start from basic questions and then you go to complicated one. And you started from the most complicated one. You are the ministry, so that's why we're coming to you with the complicated questions. Well, I will answer you in, in the following way. Sometimes we do have a certain race behind the technology as some new idea. Everybody starts implementing it and it's fashionable to speak about artificial intelligence and things like that. And we say that, yes, we have artificial intelligence everywhere. Sometimes without even understanding what artificial intelligence includes into itself, what machine learning and uh, neural networks include into themselves. But the first question that we should ask ourselves, why do we implement all of this? If we speak about the most important thing, about the work of a teacher, the work of a teacher not online, it's the work of a teacher offline with his students. It was, it is, and it will be, and it will be continued because no technologies will ever replace real communication between a teacher, educator, and give providing the values that they have to transfer to our kids so if the process of the teachers operation is working with modern technologies what do we want to achieve by this first of all we should remove certain routine procedures natalia vladimirovna today was speaking about working programs for teachers yes our teacher every year has to do a lot of paperwork from the point of view of automation this process should be automated and we should reduce the paperwork operations of our teachers curriculum uh, building the programs it should be done automatically it should be accepted automatically and big processes of development and uh, paperwork should be removed from our teachers to give them more time for working with kids or for example preparation for the classes with the usage of artificial intelligence we can analyze previous results of students we can analyze how digital content that was used in this class which results it has provided or we can compare with other classes and other schools and ai can recommend to the teacher maybe somewhere in the future that dear maria ivanovna these 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 uh, homeworks would be very useful but this is the next step of course certain routine procedures on content selection could be optimized and we should give new tools into the hands of our teachers to increase the efficiency and reduce routine so it's the efficiency quality of education 
which homeworks, which uh, simulators, which services, maybe a state-based, non-state-based, regional, could be useful in different educational situations to improve the work of a teacher with a class, to improve the work education of our kids, and to organize organize certain uh, processes in our families. And number three, all this has to be convenient because if we implement new technologies, and for this teacher has to do 354 actions and previously he was doing 12 actions no technology will help and will be adopted if each one of us will not see convenience in their operations another important thing that i liked today there was a wonderful idea of connecting main and uh, additional education because and vocational education because uh, in the course of many years we say that if a child goes to a sports school then educational organization can take results from these sports school into sport classes in the school and uh, the same thing here in the region we have a unique system where on the basis of a certain verification of results we take into consideration results which are received outside of the main educational process and this is a wonderful thing i've told to my colleagues and during one of our federal uh, meetings we're going to discuss the experience which is available in the region it's a very useful story but also speaking about the future and speaking about the ai also on the basis of the results acquired by a child in totally different vocational systems we can recommend to this child okay look in a neighboring building uh, from your house there is a wonderful uh, technical vocational school or you have good grades in mathematics and physics then you can go to this vocational class on mathematics and physics and this can be provided automatically by ai because this slow process before the teachers and families will believe in these recommendations of course we do have certain skepsis and this is good that why skepsis is available to everything that is brought by digital technologies but with time ai will do give certain recommendations will we agree to them or not that's another question because these are questions to the family to teachers because good recommendations is a good story and the final thing digital content of course to every class we should have uh, several levels of contact basic on the federal level regional content and we see in different regions there is a lot of interesting samples virtual laboratories everything that was done by districts and regions and this content should be kept things which are provided by business community interesting developments business developments and from the point of view of high-tech content business is ahead of all of us and the state has to compete with business community these are different fields but our objective is to sync them right now we are involved in uh, codif codification of the school program and in the future we'll be able to provide seamless transition between the federal system regional system and systems of business communities and then on the basis of the analysis of all these results somewhere in the future artificial intelligence will be able to recommend certain content for the advancement of teachers parents and children thank you very much it sounds very captivating everything that you say which future can be open to us and to our kids through these technologies but pandemics and the experience of transferring education into online tells us that digital education and even the basic digital education is not really good. So I would like to speak to Lyubov Nikolaevna Duhanina. Lyubov, you are increasing <coughs> digital education and creating the professional standard of a new profession, digital coach. Can you tell us about this profession? Uh, how you are training your teachers for this profession and who is this digital coach which help this person should provide to the community and to our society wonderful dear natalia vladimirovna dear colleagues thank you very much for an opportunity to work with such distinguished audience and speak about this interesting topic truthfully online education today is a trend for the global and regional development it's, it's related not just with pandemics but also with the desire of making our processes faster and more available and digital development of the society moves in a direction of bringing them uh, down to the level of personification and personification today and natalia vladimirovna was speaking about personification when she was speaking about uh, 
personal work with every child separately. And what we are saying, personification is a great opportunity which will make online education a new trend and when you've been speaking about artificial intelligence uh, opportunities i'm more optimistic person and i believe that avatars which can be created by every child for his develop his or her development to develop their personal uh, abilities and then bringing their abilities to a higher level <clears throat> they can be created and exist in the digital world and i have seen already a couple of the software products which work effectively in this direction. However, dear colleagues, I would like to tell you the following, with the consideration of the fact that we all are being listened by teachers as well. And I would like to answer the question that was asked me, that was asked of me in the beginning. First of all, I would like to say that we have to remember when we switch from one form of education into another form of education that we always have certain risks and today i would like to speak only about one risk disappearance uh, we have lost you again yes we have your sound once again in the process of transition from one form of education to another form of education we should remember about existing risks and during transition into online education we always have a risk of losing uh, pedagogical persistence on the side of the teachers and we hear uh, this uh, from teachers and from children as well and it also worries parents uh, uh, many parents are speaking about it and discussing this in social networks when teacher feels responsibility and is free in choosing uh, educational methods which he can use uh, to achieve the results uh, results of a children as well then a teacher provides his pedagogical persistence uh, staying after work uh, doing overtimes but when we switch into online environment then it's not very simple to uh, involve a child into direct uh, questioning to the pedagogical activities. It's impossible to uh, sometimes captivate uh, kids when they're divided into groups and teachers, they don't have sufficient digital literacy or competencies. And messengers and emails are being often lost in general spam. That's why it is very important for us so that our teachers in their professional standards in their qualificational requirements to all the teachers that work with kids they should have requirements to high level of it competencies three years ago we already have seen an obvious situation that in order for our country to enter digital economy we need bringing IT competencies of our population on a higher level. And in the uh, framework of uh, Russian society of knowledge, we tried to create new classes and new direction of education in this area. So what did we pay attention to? Keeping in mind that our university teachers have high level of academic knowledge that have very low level of literacy in digital area which is needed to provide high level education in this uh, digital epoch. So we came to the need of creating absolutely new profession. We called this uh, profession uh, digital coach, digital coach. We have described this profession and approved it. And today, today we have already uh, have more than 30 uh, universities which teach uh, this profession there are three levels of this profession and uh, for our first level is uh, for high school kids when we start teaching them because sometimes they provide consultancies to their parents and to the teachers but when they get this profession and when they will go to additional qualification they will enter into the federal registry of employees and they can start earning money 
in this profession, providing digital consultancies and digital coaching. Digital coaching as a profession has also been introduced into the uh, order of the uh, Ministry of Education. And uh, on this profession, we have permitted uh, training, we have created uh, 24 examinational centers in the regions uh, of Russia. These are centers uh, through which uh, people who receive the profession of digital coach uh, are being uh, raising their qualification and in the framework of our society we have already trained 700 people and we have analyzed the level of their professional readiness ideal exams were passed uh, by uh, uh, students of the third qualification level then we have a high level on the side of some school teachers who were retrained in the IT area and lower uh, points were given to the university teachers uh, however these people in the framework of our uh, educational society then they go to the population and provide different master classes on how to use gadgets how to use computers how to work with digital portal educational portals and other educational resources which are used in every region of russian federation and i would like to say that today we already have formed a community of those digital coaches who digital volunteers digital coaches who provide help to teachers and parents and they do a very important job because without basic knowledge of modern technologies without basic knowledge of it without skills of using the software products which are being offered to us by the state it's not going to be uh, possible to acquire the education and have these equal opportunities because if you're not able to even pay for utilities online it brings some anxiety on the side of population and irritation uh, to those changes which are happening so fast today as we couldn't even see uh, several years ago or some other situations so it is important for us that these digital coaches would be able to approach every household everybody who has a need in this digital coaching and i would like to say that in order to see how our digital coaches work we have conducted uh, so-called digital olympics in the framework of these digital olympics we have school kids university students and working population and even some pensioners who've been taking our classes and i can tell you that even on a basic level and on the main level they are not behind or a little bit behind uh, students of universities and not behind professionals because we've been using professionals from different uh, industries and IT specialists from different industries to educate them these are working people and this is principally important and on the advanced level are groups of digital coaches that were taught by uh, they may be 10% uh, lower with qualification than high level qualified uh, IT specialists and we have received a lot of demands from different professional communities for those digital coaches for example uh, hospitals have asked us to teach them uh, to use electronic systems for recipe providing also they've asked us to work with electronic medical records uh, with the help of these digital coaches we have requests from auditing companies accounting companies and it is understandable that in the conditions when all the industries are being transformed digitally the digital coach as a profession became an interdisciplinary profession which is needed in every place in every industry where the where the process of digital transformation is happening and that's why we apply maximum of our efforts to increase this education uh, for the of those digital coaches so that those objectives that were given to us by the president of russian federation vladimir vladimirovich putin in the part of strategic development of russian federation 
development of the program with artificial intelligence. We want to make these programs advancing faster. Another thing that I would like to tell you is that right now, on the basis of the initiative of the world skills and professional qualification uh, department, we are looking at new professions like pedagogical designer, educational technologies, digital methodologist, and data engineer for schools. These also are very important professions and interesting professions. These professions were created uh, and we have created a special program with usage of AI, which has processed more than 1500 sites, like job for you, super job, uh, both by Russian and foreign providers. And we have created several clouds, tag clouds, uh, three tag clouds related with pedagogic uh, education. What it tells us about, it tells us about that we need to think more seriously about how can we transform qualificational requirements to uh, teachers, uh, to specialists in schools and universities in the process of digital transformation. Because we often see, uh, we see that our teachers are so uh, knowledgeable. We were able to see that they are being solving every problems they've had. But right now, this is additional load. And this is additional qualification and additional competencies. And at least they should learn the starting working on the level of basic digital literacy and then we should bring them up on the highest level of digital skills and world skills today provides those requirements and those uh, sections uh, of qualification requirements in those areas as new professions and i think that ahead of us we will see a lot of interesting conversations and natalia vladimirovna I could see your confidence that your region will always be a platform for testing new professional technologies and professional discussions. Thank you very much, Lyubov Nikolaevna. It's amazing when I'm listening about this digital coach profession, I'm thinking about how unique we are today because young generation can teach older generations some things like digital uh, skills. And in the beginning of our common, big, kind relations and trust on this uh, digital platform, digital educational platform, we face a big number of uh, problems which exist not only in Russian education, but it's faced of equal opportunity for everybody and when pandemics have started kids were transferred into the remote education and we have figured out that this inequality exists in digital uh, lack of teachers lot lack of equipment lack of good internet in some locations problems with methodologies problems with content can digital technologies provide equal opportunities to everybody? It's a big question and make our domestic education not just high quality, but also more accessible. And why it's not working like that? And I would like to address this question to you, Nurlan. Thank you very much. Hello, dear colleagues. That was truthfully said. It's a paradox. On one side, when we speak about inequality or equal opportunities, we figure out that school is a very good equalizer, which should create equal opportunities for everybody. But during pandemics, we have seen that this inequality, uh, because uh, the classes have been transferred to our households, the role of the family went up and children were educated in different conditions. Some were in comfortable conditions, some were sharing one computer with brothers and sisters, and there was a big load in this sense on the family, on the households. And both, well, speaking about economical consequences, we're not speaking about whether it's a remote education or online education, but mandatory remote education. What's going to be the future consequences? Of course, our economical spe specialists will calculate those consequences and will tell us about them. But there are cases in Russian schools when 
parents are coming to the school director and ask uh, to keep their kids for the second round of the same classes and sometimes some schools are reacting to this request because kids did not get curriculum and speaking about equality i would like to make several examples our university uh, together with leading universities of russia have uh, launched the national online university of russia we are providing and making good quality education and make it accessible for all the population we have teachers we even have graduates of schools and universities who increase their knowledge or curious children sometimes from remote villages they are able to learn from the best mathematical professors for example professor from moscow state university and even a child from remote village can get classes from this master so digital technologies they play a great role from the point of view of good quality education to make it accessible but when we come to schools and right now i'm speaking about education of all the uh, kids students the role of a teacher is very important here and 90% of uh, educational consequences depend from teacher because in this we are relating with kids so we are fighting for their involvement and when kids are spending most of the time in TikTok and social networks it's hard to redirect their attention to education and in the area of uh, digital transformation there is an important thesis we shouldn't make an electronic copy of the previous system of education that we've had no we should transform it completely because digital classes online education will never be comparable to offline even though i do propagate online education but by the feeling by emotions it will never be equal to offline relations yes we could communicate through zoom without coming and the feelings would be different so in order to pull up to this experience to this level that we feel in real uh, communications we have to invest a lot into interactivity other formats so if we're going to make the electronic copy of traditional system 45 minutes of classes uh, 10 minutes breaks and keep the same uh, five point uh, assessment it should not be done like that today while listening to natalia vladimirovna in the beginning I was thinking that, yes, we should work on digitalization if we achieve those goals. And goals are simple. Does it reduce the time for teachers? Does it reduce their routine? And I see that on a federal level, we do apply some automation. Yes, it does reduce some routine operations. Does it reduce financial costs? Yes, thanks to the automation uh, in midterm uh, period, the financial benefit from implementation of this digital platform will be available. But the main question that we should arrive to is how all this will influence the educational results for our kids and how the existing digital content methodologies and practices will be able to influence the educational results increase the involvement of our kids this is still main question for all of us as teachers and we look very ironically or sometimes we are afraid of the words like artificial intelligence but it's with us it's like electricity but we don't see it but it helps us everywhere you use artificial intelligence every day without knowing it when you order a taxi when you think what to buy in the internet store and it gives you advice as what you should buy what sh should you look at uh, online cinema theaters or uh, what who you should even fall in love into in mobile uh, acquaintance platforms so this digital platform will also accumulate big amounts of data and will recommend to our kids what should be learned at which time it should be learned and how they should be educated thank you very much thank you thank you let's give our hands to the speaker Nurlan, another thing that I would like to ask you about, not all regions are so advanced, not all regions are so successful in the development of digital technologies like Yugra in Russia. What can be done to reduce the number of these problems? And why do we still have those problems? 
Well, this is the forward movement, but everything depends on the infrastructure, on the content, on the availability of wideband internet, on the availability of the equipment, position of top managers, regional managers, and key role is played by the position and perception of all those things by uh, school directors, uh, uh, school principals. And the third level, we also were able to see right now that it's difficult, it's complicated to educate remotely. Of course, we have to invest into professional training of our teachers to raise their qualification, to give them digital education in schools, in regions, because the quality in the region uh, of our teachers uh, cannot be lower than the quality of teachers in big cities. You know, if we're not going to bring up the digital literacy, it will not be of any good so digital technologies will never replace a teacher but if digital technology will be used by good and well-educated teachers then they will be too good for all of us another thing that is uh, good to learn of uh, how these challenges are solved and how our colleagues uh, in other education platforms, in other systems, in other countries, what they do. Maybe we have common problems, maybe they have some other unique solutions on their side. That's why I would like to ask a question to Mr. Janine. Uh, do you have any lack of professionals and which measures are taken by the state to remove this problem? Do you change your uh, requirements to your specialists from the point of view of digital transformation? Mr. Janine, did you hear the question? Dr. Liu Janine? Yes, we are speaking about problems of digitalization. Okay. Should I repeat my question? We are really interested in your experience in the area of digital education. Do you have a problem of lack of professionals and which measures your state takes to change the requirements to professionals in the area of digital transformation? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm happy to have this chance communicate with all of you for discussion about uh, the digitalization and uh, so digital skills. Okay, so in China, the situation is that uh, and, uh, in the uh, industry and uh, especially the, in the workshop because the digital technology development so now we are uh, study to make the workshop become the, become the digital workshop. Okay, so this concerns many digital technology, for example, the, the big data, machine learning, and the internet, the industry internet, internet of things, and AR and VR, and the blockchain, all this uh, is now is developed very quickly. So for the for the enterprise, so the the problem, the question is that for the traditional industry, so uh, maybe the lack of the the engineering, the lack of the digital. Uh, knowledge and like the big data and uh, the uh, in, uh, in industry internet all this knowledge so from the company or the government now uh, gave some uh, especially the government gave some the, the policy and some uh, financial support to training the traditional the uh, industry uh, the, the, the company for the traditional engineer to study this this technology so and uh, uh, the engineering accept this training maybe 
and uh, from the university or college and uh, so the, the the company or the enterprise also organize this training and uh, so we think i think at this moment uh, we lack of the hybrid uh, technical or engineers this means that uh, for some engineer they have the traditional mechanical and uh, and uh, electronic technology but maybe they lack of some uh, the digital technology so uh, for the teacher for the culture they we we, we also lack of this uh, coach or teacher it means that uh, this teacher is hybrid they play not only now the uh, now the digital technology they also should uh, understand the traditional mechanical or electronic technology so this combination make this uh, the education and the training is better so from the, the government side and so uh, also at this moment uh, so the more financial uh, support will uh, focus on the to, to construct uh, the the platform so now the because of pandemic all the training education uh, already especially uh, already move to the uh, move to the online so the online education now is uh, quickly uh, developed so uh, at this moment uh, more financial the, the 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 organization will focus on to set up this platform so this and another for the uh from the our organization our some uh, society some uh, government also we organize some uh, competition because the competition also uh, is a manner and to improve the education and the training uh, we uh, for the international level we because we we set up a future skill future skill and the future skill including the the the, the digital tech, uh, skill and uh, the the intelligent skill and all this so we set up a future skill uh, the training basis or training schools and uh, to training the the engineer or technician or, or, or for 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 future uh, when the, maybe at this moment uh, the digital factory not so popular but gradually the digital factory will were more popular for one factory maybe only two or three uh, two or three professionals so they must be they must be the hybrid they know the robotics they know the uh, the all the mechanical maintains they know the, the the programming so so now we training or cultivate this hybrid professional at this moment uh, is very important so this is my idea okay thank you Thank you very much, uh, Liu Jinin. It was very interesting. Uh, let's go back to the topic of big data. And Pavel Vladimirovich was speaking about it. Alexander, I wanted to speak to you as well. What does it mean for specific, for every separate child? On one side, we say that digital education means equal opportunities, and at the same time, it's individualization. It's more obvious picture for the parents, uh, how the child is getting educated, what is his or her progress, and it simplifies uh, the selection of the future professional path for a child. But on the other side, we have a lot of ethical questions, because the more child spends in the internet, 
the longer and bigger digital footprint child leaves in the internet and then possibly it could be more dangerous uh, some uh, criminals can use uh, their portfolio for some illegal activities or maybe even uh, advertising companies can use it for advertising purposes which is also not really you know all our intellectual skills even today can be traced in the internet and somehow can be used against us but in addition to marketing and advertising technologies what else uh, happens in digital education technologies can you give us some specific examples about how it happens on your platforms and how does it work in your platforms Hello, dear colleagues. Thank you very much for your question, Natalia Vladimirovna. Perhaps it would be more proper to be more certain about terminology. Speaking about marketing and digital trace, digital portfolio, sounds as beautiful words. But behind these beautiful words, it's not really clear what is behind them. There is no common terminology and concepts which would be understood on equal level by everybody in order to be on the same page, in order to understand on the same page, we should define these terms because we don't have... Yes, of course, we do use those terms. Uh, well, as a basic person without digital education, I will tell you how I see this. For example, I do the home improvement. I go to the internet site, I buy some uh, wallpaper or paint and marketing internet mechanisms are offering me what should I buy. But Pavel was uh, saying things when artificial intelligence will offer to a child opportunities for future development of his or her own talents and possibilities on the basis of the digital trace that was left by the child in the in the internet by some search requests but why this child is Google's uh, or what he plays or she plays can we also use it as a term digital trace in the end internet yes if we use internet trying to put our data in the internet but sometimes a lot of this data is not related even to us and uh, sometimes a false trace is formed about uh, those people who go to search digital trace in the internet well good terms uh, on a common level everybody understands this common approach what is this digital trace digital trace uh, means certain actions some people do some actions in the internet and all these actions are being traced what is this portfolio it's a basic uh, uh, amateur approach because we don't have terminology so we are thinking our understanding and the portfolio in my understanding is accumulated results what already happened facts uh, like educational results uh, educational degrees and Pavel Vladimirovich has asked a proper question uh, during his speech and I put it down why why do we do all of this yes uh, it sounds beautiful it sounds great that everything's going to be automatically offered to us but being more specific coming from some practical experience there are two objectives that we've been speaking about today number one is some individualized approach personalized approach to a child and the second one is management or control analytics in decision making on the basis of this data on the basis of this analysis statistical information etc so speaking about the first one about personification or personalized approach on the level of the government or the Ministry of Digital uh, Development, we have adopted an approach, uh, a human-oriented, individualized approach, when even on a state service internet site we see when a person is being offered to pay for some services or for utilities, and uh, we have a wild field of different approaches and adopting them for every separate child for their current needs for the current educational condition so by understanding this digital trace as you've been speaking about it we've been thinking a lot about what do we need to accumulate so we don't have the excessive information because sometimes there is an approach in the big data let's accumulate all the data and then we'll purge it analyze it purge it and select the proper data but from this point of view we have a lot of additional questions about those marketing engines that you've been speaking about 
but we are more practically oriented people. And like Natalia Vladimirovna said in the beginning, we as non-state development university, we do cooperate with the government in this area and with the Department of Education and Youth Policies, with the Department of Informational Technologies uh, from the point of view of developing this state educational system. So we have been applied, applying a lot of approaches to this digital trace processing. And the first thing that comes to our mind is current education, current grades, and we do have the electronic uh, school books. And also, we were able to add into this platform educational pathway of a child uh, vocational education and this gave us understanding of interests on the side of our kids because if in the school it's just simple grades which is a very subjective and simple subjective parameter of every child's education his or her grades it's very subjective but their information about their vocational activities outside of the school give us more understanding about their interests which is more important and like pavel have already said this also gives you opportunity to give certain recommendation because we know their vocational interests we know certain geolocation around his uh, uh, residence or around his school some vocational classes that he's or he, she is visiting but right now we don't have uh, any results on the side of the artificial intelligence or we don't have any breakthroughs in the quality of their education not yet so by understanding that all these can be very subjective criteria uh, for a specific individual yes we do understand that uh, uh, class grade is a very subjective understanding of every child because it's a teacher gives a uh, for example, sometimes there are situations when a child has a good understanding of a certain topic, but he's graded lower than some other kids uh, for some due to some subjective reasons. But from the point of view of big data, this could be a very serious data which shows us about their education. We can look uh, uh, at regions, municipality, but for a specific person, for a specific student, this is not, we don't have enough data to make specific decisions what should be offered as vocational activities for this child. So thinking about this, we came to the conclusion that we need some additional qualitative characteristics what this child does specifically on those vocational classes what are the results for example how much time he spent on solving certain objective or what was the complexity of this objective so involvement of a child into activities and by these qualitative characteristics we can offer something to a child but where can we take this data it's not available yet and the only thing we came to right now that at a given moment of time these spheres where digitalization is total this is everything which is related with the content digital content because it gives it's fully provided in digital format and content producers they do it in course of many years they trace they do trace what users do inside of their content how much time they spend on uh, filling uh, certain tasks uh, what was the complexity of the task how many times the uh, person have repeated his action to solve the task uh, many uh, producers look even at the perception some people perceive visually some people are more an audition some other people in other ways in writing and this is all digitalized in their databases and this is available as this digital trace you've been speaking about so one of the uh, directions is our cooperation with the manufacturers of digital content and accumulation of this digital portfolio those results that were achieved by children in the framework of using different uh, content systems and then we might have another question uh, maybe we should dedicate some additional uh, research or maybe we should do additional work on the level of Ministry of Education but we don't have specific standards what do we want to get from those uh, content producers in which format which particular data we should get because every content producer is a uh, commercial company which solves their own problems and definition of those steps would be a first proper step to accumulate this portfolio 
to understand more about students. And on the basis of this qualitative data, we would be able to give more precise recommendations and more precise, precise directions, including directions to the teachers and to the kids themselves. Next question that we might have uh, from this uh, particular data accumulated digitally from content systems is their efficiency. My child uh, goes to learn.ru uh, to the first grades, everything is interesting. My child likes it and he clicks everything. But my question is to pull my child on time from the computer when he spends too much time there. But another question is about efficiency that Nurlan was telling us. What influences this quality of education? Which information is perceived better and in which format? Because business is business. Their main objective is profits, to sell something, to involve into the uh, content. But we have to understand understand the question of efficiency and this is the objective for us that we together with Alexei Anatolievich was trying to solve is integration of different systems in our educational platform different educational content platforms and then we should understand what kids use more well the main criteria right now the more they use it means that it's more interesting but then we have to understand I mean, which is more effective, not just interesting, but which is more most effective. And it should be a certain indicator. We should develop some KPIs for this to give a feedback. This works. This is more convenient for the teacher. This is more interesting for the child. And by combining both, both of those, you as the producer should improve your content in these two directions. And then we come to big data accumulation. And a, another objective is the management reporting, uh, controlling data, <clears throat> and from the point of view of digitalization of education i work in this area in the last eight years and uh, even looking back at some technical tasks uh, in any systems development and implementation uh, faces uh, technical specifications and those technical specifications usually simplify the work reduce the routine operations simplify the work of every stakeholder like teacher administrative personnel and in the last eight years, this is like a mantra is being announced like our goal that we are striving for. Maybe eight years ago, it was too difficult for us to do. But right now, when we have a lot of initial systems which uh, collect data, it includes uh, recording a child into uh, enrolling into the preschool, in, in, enrolling into school uh, systems of financial accounting, grading systems, uh, everything. All these systems accumulate data. So we have to structure this data. We have to collect this data, analyze it, and then move up from simple process of automation to a process of digital transformation. We should change the processes. We don't have to fill additional forms, reports, Excels, because if we still report fill something in Excel, it means that digital transformation is not complete in its proper level and it has not achieved the desirable results. Natalia Vladimirovna has already told us, well, we collect this data in Excel in automatic mode, but we don't want teachers to spend uh, time for Excel spreadsheets. We want them to spend time with our children. We want them to spend time with our kids and not on statistics. That's why we have to review our standards and regulations on the federal level because, yes, we do have statistical reporting that teachers have to fill, yes, and we use it in the course of many years. So the objective of digital transformation is to automate those routine operations and remove them from the hands of teachers into the hands of the administration personnel. And Natalia Vladimirovna have mentioned a project that we have launched last year. It was so-called uh, Digital Situational Center, where we collect information from different systems, where data has already been collected. We aggregate this data, and then we create uh, dashboards, uh, visual indicators, which can help us in the decision-making process. And we see a great potential of development in this area, especially in the connection in the interdepartmental uh, communications, like medicine, the simplest thing 
explain uh, the document about sick leave for a school kid. You have to go to the doctor, get a sick leave document and bring it to school. But there is a medical system and we have educational system which has everything. It's a question of a contact between these two systems. So the child doesn't have to visit when he is sick. He doesn't have to visit doctor. The doctor should con contact him wirelessly. And these documents should be sent automatically to the school without visiting all those facilities. Yes, right now we do have uh, uh, enrolling kids into the school remotely, enrolling them into the preschool remotely. Then all these interconnections between different industries also should be done remotely. Parents shouldn't go to the doctor, parents shouldn't go to the administration office to bring this paper. It's development. So, speaking about vocational education, cultural education, uh, music schools, and back to the question of our understanding for example child goes to the art school uh, and uh, in regular school they have uh, art classes so i think that his achievements in the art school should be automatically transferred to the regular school so that our teacher in the regular school would know about the child's achievements in the vocational activities so it's the question of the portfolio of communication and uh, an interesting objective that we have and that we have to do and we are approaching this topic of accumulation of big data because without big data these services will not be available and uh, from this side i would like to say thanks to natalia vladimirovna and the uh, minister of education because they take very positively uh, those innovations and they help us in moving in this direction to digitalization and they use the fruits of these innovations yes they do nurlan you wanted to add something yes i would like to hear about the advanced experience from singapore but a first couple of words uh, uh, listening to the education activists i always ask myself a question without even comparing myself with advanced industries like banking sector or even retail. Why are we behind even medicine? <clears throat> because medicine already digitalized the medical history. They are transferred from one clinic to another clinic automatically without any problems. And implementation of digital technologies and new technologies in medicine happens through low clinical tests. And our poor teachers are we are pushing anything into their hands because it has a word education connected to it so very often i think why are we much behind other technologies even though uh, we are not able to achieve similar results in the education <clears throat> maybe the international experience experience of advanced countries will help us uh, mr Turman, uh, we are asking you it's not a secret that singapore is one of the leaders in school education and is known by high level of education of teachers and their uh, digital literacy so the child who is taken to school in singapore is coming to highly professional specialists we have no doubts about that but pandemics also has made its corrections to this situation because education uh, has moved from school into apartment into house and the child is getting educated not only with teachers but also with their family and family plays an important role in the process of education during this uh, period of remote education as we call it so how the state participated in these activities and which conclusions did you come to in this difficult period and how Singapore was able to cope with remote education during pandemics? Thank you. Okay. It's good to be uh, speaking to my Russian education colleagues. Right. Uh, let me first and foremost say the context in Singapore will be slightly different because we are a small city state, 720 square kilometers highly dense, uh, but nonetheless, uh, you rightly pointed out that the pandemic has actually accelerated the pace of digitalization in education. Right? Uh, we was looking at digitalization of education for a long time, but the pandemic has sort of accelerated, has forced everyone to actually look at digitalization and education. Um, three groups of people, that we must always remember. First, students. 
right? We must ensure that whatever education opportunities we provide is equitable, that it reaches everyone, not just the better off, well off students, but also the weaker, the socioeconomically disadvantaged students, right? Um, second group of people, we cannot leave behind the teachers. The teachers are paramount. The teachers are critical in this nexus of technology and students' interaction. Right? Um, what we have done, and this is where I think the state plays a critical role. Okay? Um, during the pandemic, we went into remote learning. What we have done in terms of teachers is we have talked about um, traditionally, we talk about pedagogical knowledge for teachers, content knowledge, subject matter knowledge for teachers. Now we talk about technological knowledge for teachers in terms of training teachers to have digital pedagogies. Like I think uh, um, Alexander or Nurulan pointed out, we cannot trans shift from classroom education to the laptop or learning device and just copy it. There must be a transformation happening. So when we talk about digital pedagogies, it's quite different, right? To ensure that there is the teacher who's always involved in the educational process of the child. It is critical that even when we are doing online learning and teaching, things like values education, character education is not left behind. So when we moved, when Singapore moved to remote learning, we decided, we realized, not decided, we realized that the way we teach and the scheduling of the online learning cannot be the same as we do it in the physical classroom, where we have one hour of mathematics, then we move on to one hour of English, one hour of science. It does not work that way, right? Uh, we'll be foolish to think that it will be so uh, coordinated because the students are not in front of you all the time. Okay? Students need a break from the screen. Teachers need a break from the screen, right? So in terms of scheduling, even scheduling of learning, we need to adjust to ensure that there is more leeway, more flexibility in the way teaching is done. Second, in terms of content, what subjects do we teach online? What subjects can be taught online the best? Not every subject avails itself to online teaching and learning equally. Some subjects lend themselves very well and it can be done. Some subjects cannot. So in this digitalization journey in Singapore, what we decided is we will do some subjects online some subjects still has to be done face-to-face -face with the classroom interaction with the students. Okay. So the way we did online teaching and learning, it actually did not make the teacher's life easier. So anyone who thinks online teaching is easy, believe me, it is not. You ask any teacher, they will tell you, it is almost double the triple the workload. Right? But it will become easier as it becomes second nature to us, just like classroom teaching has become second nature to us, but it takes time. In this journey, I think Nurulan asked, why has technology not entered our classrooms earlier? Why are we not talking about advanced technologies when everybody else is doing it? Doctors do it, accountants do it, everybody does it except in education. Because we tend to leave teachers out of the equation. We leave, tend to leave teachers out of the conversation, the technological conversations that we must have. We must include teachers. We must upskill them. We must reskill them. When we decide on digital platforms, how much conversations do we ask, have with the teachers in terms of what kind of digital platforms works best for you as a teacher? What is it that you want in technology when you talk about digital learning? Teachers are very much left behind in terms of the conversations we have in the digital transformation. So we must include the teachers. 
The third group of people that we must include for digital transformation and education are parents. We cannot leave behind the parents if we want digital transformation in education to be successful because it is happening at their home, right? We have always made parents feel as if, oh, make sure you keep your kids away from technology, keep your kids, students away from in the internet. Internet is harmful. And then suddenly now we're talking about, oh, we are going to learn online. So this dilemma in parents' minds, you say there are a lot of harmful stuff on the internet, and then now you're using the internet to teach and learn, Parents are wondering, what's happening? Right? So we need to include them in this conversation to say that, yes, technology, like any platform, is neither moral or immoral. As parents, as adults, as young adult students, we need to make the moral, ethical judgment. So we need to educate our students on cyber responsibility on how to use the technology, how to discern information out there on the internet. Okay? While we are educating our students, we also need to embrace teach, uh, parents' fears of what this technology might do to my child. Is he spending too much time looking at the screen? What about his eyesight? Okay. All these ethical as well as physical concerns. When a child is sitting in the classroom, he moves around, right? He talks to his classmates, but when he's learning online, he's just looking at the screen and you will have to wonder whether he's actually paying attention. Parents, if they are not brought into the fold of digital education process, we will also not fully experience the success digital education can bring. So we have teachers, we have students, we have parents who can bring all of these three groups of people together and enhance and upskill and reskill. It is the state. It must be the responsibility of the Ministry of Education in Singapore's case to ensure that everyone is on board. The Ministry of Education, in terms of equity, uh, do all students have digital devices available to them for online learning, right? If your poor students do not have, what will the state do to ensure that every child has a digital device to en uh, ensure digital learning can take place? How about internet bandwidth? In terms of uh, the teachers, are teachers provided sufficient time and resources for professional development in terms of e technological pedagogies, in terms of digital pedagogies, right? Is there enough support for parents to assure and assure them that their students, while they are learning online, will be taken care of and they will not lose out. They will not lose out while that there is remote education. For all these things, the state has a role to play. So in Singapore's case, we have this platform that the Ministry of Education has developed called the Student Learning Space, where every teacher in Singapore puts in his lesson plans, digital uh, resources, so that the child can learn. We also have this called um, Parents Gateway. If you can see, it says Parents Gateway, where the schools communicate through an app to all of us who are parents. So I have two sons in uh, schooling now. So information from the school gets pushed out to me via an app, right? So this is how we include parents in the digital education transformation. So this is what we have been doing. Has it been an easy journey? Nope. It is an ongoing journey. It is going to be tough. Uh, but as long as we have all the players, the students, the teachers, the parents, and the state involved, uh, I think we can make this transformation successful. Thank you. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Mr. Thurman. It was very interesting and emotional. You said that there are different types of educational processes which cannot be broadcasted online. And I remember my husband is a karate teacher. Uh, during isolation, he was giving one hour classes in Zoom to, to four year kids and they were able to follow his uh, classes. So I think these circumstances, they have put us in a new uh, limitations but on the other side they have opened new opportunities on our side and uh, in some places our teachers became our superheroes so our plenary meeting is uh, educational digital reality expectations is coming to an end and i think that <clears throat> We have very big expectations and reality maybe a little bit behind but i have an impression that we do see our goals and we know how to get there natalia vladimirovna what can you say about that in the end well i would like to tell you one thing thank you very much for this beautiful discussion everything that we've been speaking about is really important first of all we are people we are mothers we are fathers grandmothers and grandfathers uncles and aunties but we are the same big united world and i've been giving answer to your question while opening this forum in the beginning i have informed you that we do it 12 years we are international forum we have big audience uh, and big participation and that's why we have uh, have a certain uh, brand and we have determined that uh, this is not just one phase but these are phases of our kids who are winning in olympics math informatics physics our best students in yandex school and uh, the next it forum that we're going to conduct we are going to conduct with double purpose uh, IT forum. Including, we will in include our uh, students it's going to be junior it forum and it will take its place uh, in a part of our forum, uh, part of this meeting between experts and specialists. No matter what we do, uh, whether we are kids or adults, we still do it for the sake of tomorrow, for our future. Well, that's my opinion. That's my assessment. Thank you very much. Thank you for creating such interesting conferences uh, for our own education. And I am as a parent, I've heard a lot of interesting things for myself. Uh, and honestly speaking, I feel at peace in my soul. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear friends.